Hi, this is Janos, it's Free World Audio, and we are back at questions. So, Vestel Audio commented that every speaker driver produces different frequencies, just like a microphone or your eardrums can pick up hundreds of frequencies with a single diaphragm surface at the same time. The key is the sum of all of those frequencies. Well, I have not yet liked these comments. So, what is he talking about is that uh, basically all of the sounds we hear end up in on a single membrane on our ear and they're getting picked up by our ear. But how about producing those sounds? Uh, so when you have the most simplistic way of recording is that you have a microphone number one, microphone number two, and there's like people playing music here, blah, blah, blah. And one microphone is picking up sounds and the other microphone is picking up sounds and it's going to get recorded on your media, right? And you're going to play it back. And, uh, and what each of them will record is the sum of all the frequencies which are hitting the diaphragm. And what is the most natural way of reproducing these sounds? And, and I would say, uh, based on my perception, the, the most coherent way and, and, and keeping truest to the source in the frequency domain is to reproduce it with a single driver. So re left channel, right channel, left and right microphone. Because whatever frequencies were hitting, they were hitting a single diaphragm. And you are going to get something that behaves in the same way when you reproduce all of these with a single diaphragm, right? And then you can reproduce these things just as the microphones pick them up. When we are splitting them to, let's say, a, a tweeter uh, and a woofer, in that case, then the woofer is just making the lower sounds and the tweeter the higher sounds. Uh, and uh, the room and your ears have to do the summing to come up with the uh, total. But the problem is that the there's going to be a crossover, there's going to be your room, there's going to be your listening position, everything is going to skew, 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 skew all of those things. And it will be different how the microphones picked it up. And then you would be saying, oh, okay, we can solve it with DSP. Sure, uh, you can solve it, uh, certain things with DSP, but then you still have the issue that the High frequencies are coming from a different physical position. So you can toy around with how much the crossover itself uh, counts or puts down the table, but the actual fact that the position, the physical position, there is a several centimeters or like uh, inches difference between where those frequencies are emanating from, it's going to give you a delay and, and the difference in, uh, so it's not the same point where those frequencies originate. It's as if these two, in, in real life, the, those low frequencies and the highs were captured by the same microphone. They were not captured by a, a big microphone and then the small one. Then the big capturing just the low frequencies and the small capturing just the high frequencies. If that was the case, then a multi driver uh, solution would faithfully reproduce the way those microphones picked up the sound. So basically, if we go multi-way speaker, I mean multi-driver speakers, then we are uh, implementing uh, a schizoid situation. So basically we are breaking up the signal into two different sources. So instead of a point source that was recorded as a point, we break up multiple points. Now, of course, there's I, I do see I'm I'm a fortune teller at, at actually just now that, that I will have uh, tons of comments asking, but wait a sec, when we have an orchestra, a bunch of musicians, and they put a microphone for each of the instruments. So so basically what you are going to get in your recording is the sum of these microphones. So they will sum maybe this, this microphone for the left channel, 
this and that for the right channel and this one they will mix to maybe 50% each channel same thing for that instrument but as you see in this case uh, the frequency domain is still the same they did not use a microphone here for the high uh, for the low high low high low so uh, we are still uh, even though we royally messed up the perception of the 3D acoustic where the, the space where it was recorded, but the uh, integrity, the frequency integrity is still intact for each instrument. And, and yeah, they're using different microphones uh, because let's say, for example, if you have a flute, then you would use a different microphone to record the flute then recording a uh, double bass right if you have a double bass then that requires a different microphone that has a preference for the low registers and and one that that renders it the tone more beautifully and for the have your flute you want a very different microphone but but still each of these microphones are full range just the difference between flute and double bass mic is that the flute mic has a preference for the high frequencies and it, it, it rolls off in the low, low end and, and the bass is the exact opposite it has preference for the low frequencies and it rolls off for the highs but both highs and lows like highs and lows are picked up by the same microphone we are not using a separate mic to get this region and to get that region and if we were to do the same like have DSP microphones where we have a specific cut and we just with DSP record this part with DSP record that part and that's how we store it in, a, in an audio stream and then we can play it back in a DSP system now that would be optimal for that right so what on earth what did I want to say with these things um, is that for one thing when you have a single driver that's when uh, you can authentically reproduce uh, an acoustic space how how the microphones really picked it up when we have this bunch of microphones each uh, instrument picked up by a different mic then it's the recording engineer the mastering guy who in the studio who is putting together an artificial acoustic image artificial acoustic space and the size of the instruments will be artificial it will only be a native sound and that's why people have uh, uh, all sorts of notions that oh you know i have these uh, artec voice of the theater speakers and the guitar is huge in it yeah that's because the it was mastered to sound disproportionately huge because of these scenarios that we are currently employing in 99 percent of all recordings while when you go back to the ancient uh, way of recording that you put two mics on the stage stereo microphones uh, and then they picked up the native sound stage and put that on a recording but of course if you have a recording like that with modern mainstream audio gear it sounds like crap because modern mainstream audio gear are optimized to work well with an artificial image however when you have natively recorded uh, things then with single recording source single playback source you will get astonishing imaging so this is why single driver speakers are amazing imagers because they give back the sound just the way as it was recorded and and we have comments about um, doppler effect doppler distortion that single drivers are not good because there is doppler distortion the same source what, what is that so the doppler distortion is that uh, we have the let's say here that there's like a long frequency like a bass note right and now there's a p high frequency and now if that high frequency note is coming like that then we perceive it as a high frequency now if we put combine those two together then they will sound different why 
because that, that high frequency node, the starting point of it, will not be just the same spot, but it will be like here, uh, and, and then it will be riding on the base node. So basically, uh, it will be modulated if, if, let's say, this is like a 35 hertz signal, and this is like, a, let's say, like a 3 kilohertz signal, then the 3 kilohertz will be modulated by the 35 hertz. So it's not just like a pure 3K, but as the 35 hertz goes, sometimes it will be a little bit faster, and sometimes it will be slowing down. Faster, slowing down. And, and, and you have probably heard this from several sources, that when you have multiple drivers, like you have a woofer that produces this bass note, and then you have a, a tweeter, maybe a ribbon tweeter, then they can freely reproduce these uh, without interference so that the base note will not hinder the reproduction of the uh, high frequency so so there will not be Doppler effect between the two uh, yes that's true however <laughs> here's my however that would stand true if these two were recorded by different microphones so if the low frequency was se recorded separate from the high frequency however how they are recorded is there's a single microphone picking up both highs and lows and even when we have this multi-miking scenario each of the microphones pick up a wide band of frequencies so whatever you need to reproduce you need to reproduce it natively and when you take that native thing apart then you will introduce a reverse Doppler effect because these tiny frequencies are supposed to ride together with the bass note that's how they were recorded by the microphone and if you cut them to apart by a crossover then they will start to ride separately and they will be an inverse Doppler effect compared to the real acoustic event so uh, uh, a single driver speaker is the correct way to reproduce uh, the the uh, the high frequencies in relationship to the low frequencies with our current recording technologies unless you have recordings where they used super band limited microphones to record instruments but in those cases uh, if you use such techniques then you skew their tonality and, and the sense of the acoustic space by a very large degree and I would say in then it doesn't matter uh, what you do Doppler wise because you have altered the tonality so much that uh, it's going to be an artifact no matter what you do from that point on there's however one issue with the single drivers where they fall short is that even though they they reproduce the Doppler uh, correctly as they were recorded uh, but uh, that also entails that uh, that the, the excursion of the diaphragm should be relatively similar to the excursion that was recorded. So this effect that uh, you have the correct Doppler uh, effect on both microphone and speaker is when they have the same excursion. So this will mean that the, uh, it will be perfect for a single driver, Doppler-wise, timing-wise, when you play at a low SPR, a low volume, when the cone excursion is low and comparatively similar to the excursion that was recorded. And when you start to push the volume higher and higher, then this Doppler will be will rise and will be more and more noticeable. When you have uh, a regular speaker, like two or three ways when they are broken up, then when you play it loud, then you will miss that recorded Doppler effect that the microphone recorded, so you will have the inverse Doppler at low volumes, but at high volumes you will not have that added Doppler because they are riding separately. So this is why the Doppler effect is the reason why single driver speakers are kings of imaging and tone at lower volume. And when you push them to high SPL, that's when things start to go kaboom. 
and basically because the added uh, Doppler and also because uh, when you are pushing high energy for the low frequencies it's much harder to keep the high frequencies going on and you are just exponentially increasing cone breakup as you increase the energy demands to the speaker and that's where full range drivers don't work so if you want to push it louder and louder they can sometimes play loud but i don't recommend it because you will be leaving high fidelity however with multi-driver speakers like two or three or four drivers they work the exact opposite way at high volume they are comfortable with the excursion they are comfortable with the doppler effects so like excursion do doppler multi-drivers are, are cool with that with high pressure but when you drop back to average listening level to low that's where shit hits the fan because you experience the negative doppler on the drivers because the they are supposed to ride together at uh, low volumes but they are not so that's why with multi-driver speakers they don't work they can't really handle lower volumes and and that's why their imaging suffers that's why they stop becoming engaging but single driver speakers are the kings of that so as you see there's no perfect technology each one has its advantages and if you live in a situation and you have preferences that you want like quieter music have a single driver and if you want to blast it out, then have a multi-driver speaker. Or, best of all, have both. And you can have the best of both worlds for quieter listening or average listening. Or when you really want to burn down the house with loud rock music. So, thank you for tuning in. Have an astonishingly good day. Bye-bye.